You may be seated. Sister O. Jean Cooper Wolf, 86 of Enterprise, passed away Wednesday, September 14th, 2022, at her home surrounded by her loving family. Sister Jean Cooper Wolf was born March 13th, 1936, to the late J.C. and Mary Helen Cooper in the Goodman community. She was a member of New Life Pentecostal Church, where she went faithful the last two years of her life. Sister Jean was a woman of great faith, and her life could be summed up through these words, faith, hope, and love. In her spare time, she loved flower gardening, planting seeds, and watching beautiful flowers grow and playing the accordion, the piano, organ, and guitar. She received the baptism of the Holy Ghost in 1952, and shortly afterward was baptized in Jesus' name. She survived by three children and one stepson whom she loved like her very own, Alyssa Jan Smith, husband Mike of Enterprise, Eddie Mac Harrison Sr., Frida, wife Frida of Gastonia, North, or Gastonia, North Carolina, Martha Jean Langley of Brandon, Florida, and Kenneth Kenny D. Wolf Jr., wife Shirley of Ohio. Eight grandchildren, 15 great-grandchildren, two brothers, Tim Cooper of Kinston, Alabama, and Joel Cooper of Apopka, Florida, and many, many special nieces and nephews. We're here today celebrating the life of Sister Jean Cooper Wolf, and uh, all of us today still have something to look forward to. And we're here today celebrating the life that she's lived. And one day, if we live the same life that she's lived, we have a hope that there's a wonderful day in heaven that we can be reunited with her and see Jesus. Hallelujah. I've only known her for the last couple of years. and She was wheelchair bound. But the stories I've heard, she loved God. And I've often heard how much that she loved attending church and loved being here in the services love singing and worshiping God. And I would see at times the Holy Ghost begin to move in the service and she'd be back in and her hand would go up. Yeah. She'd sit back in that wheelchair and that hand would go up. Right. And I knew God was touching her heart. Yeah. And so join us today in one of her songs that she enjoyed us singing here at New Life Pentecostal Church. Oh, my. 
but we find comfort in knowing that she was born again according to Acts 2 and 38. Born of water and of spirit. And because of that, we know death has absolutely no power Amen. over the believer on right. that great day. When the trump of God sounds, there will be a literal resurrection of the saints and those of us who are alive and remain will be called up to meet the Lord in the air. She's resting in the arms of Jesus That's right. We love you, our precious mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother, until we meet again.
we just worship the Lord for a moment? Thank you. I'm so glad to feel His presence in this house. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we love you to this Lord. We thank you for your presence. Let's come into this sanctuary. Oh, God, there's nothing greater, Lord, than your presence and your spirit. Thank you for this visitation today. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Reach out and touch him right now. I feel like the Lord was talking to our hearts. God, you are always. Amen. Amen. Like that woman the Bible tells us about, she had to get to Jesus. She had to make her way through the crowd, through the press. Yeah. Something in her heart, that faith that she had. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, everything's going to be all right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yes, this is a homegoing service today. Amen. Yes. But what better time yeah. for you to touch his garment, right. for you to touch Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. To find that relief and that help. Yes. Whatever's going on in your life, yes. the Lord knows about it. He's concerned. Amen. He loves you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I would like to welcome each of you and thank all of you for attending this home point service today for Sister Jean Cooper Wolf. And we're not the only ones that are interested in this service today and what has taken place in the last few days. The psalmist wrote in one in Psalms 116 and verse 15, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. He's interested. And as Sister Jean took her last few breaths, he was watching. He was careful to notice what was going on, amen, in that bedroom. The word precious means valuable, prized, weighty, <coughs> rare, splendid. That's how God sees the death of his saints. Amen. And I know that we're celebrating today, and yet we feel a certain sense of sorrow in our hearts when we have to say goodbye. It is part of living. The longer we live, the more we have to say goodbye. But there's nothing wrong with feeling sorrow, even though our hope is that our sister has gone on to meet the Lord. That emotion of sorrow is something that God gave us. And it's not wrong to feel that. I would like to read from Acts chapter 8 and verse 2 that the death of Stephen, devout men carried Stephen to his burial, and they made great lamentation <coughs> over him. Stephen was one of the great men of God. His ministry was cut short because he was martyred for the name of Jesus. And when they took him, I don't believe they were weeping because they were concerned about what might have happened to his soul. They were lamenting, having to say goodbye at such a time. And yes, it's all right, family, for you to feel sorrow, to miss that uh, place in your life that she fulfilled and filled for so many years. Amen. Friends, it's, it's all right to feel that. But there's a difference in our sorrow. We do not sorrow as having no hope. Paul wrote, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. I'm writing to you, don't, don't sorrow in the way that most of our world sorrows when they come to this time of saying goodbye to a loved one. But we sorrow as those who have hope. That it's not the end. 
For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, do we believe that today? Yes. Amen. Amen. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. <clears throat> Warren Chandler lay dying, and a friend asked him, Please tell me frankly, do you dread crossing the river of death? His answer was this. My father owns the land on both sides of the river. Yeah. Why should I be afraid? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's how I want to look at the crossing over. Yeah. Jesus went to the cross. He died there. He gave his life. They did not take it. He gave it so that our sins might be washed. We might be cleansed. That we might be set free from the bondage of those sins. He was buried and he rose again on that resurrection morning. That's why we're here today. Yeah. Yes. Because he rose again and gave us hope. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He is that high priest after the order of Melchizedek. That high priest that is not after the ironic <coughs> order. That the priesthood could not continue. Each man that fulfilled that position came to a place where he stopped because of death. But this high priest is able to save us to the uttermost because he lives forever. Do you believe that Jesus died and rose again? Amen. That's who he's coming after. The believers. Hallelujah. Praise God. You have noticed, I'm sure, that the first two songs that we sang today were particularly about that place called heaven. And over years, there have been many hymns written about heaven. It's something that, no doubt, all of us have noticed somehow in the last years last number of years I started to say the last few years the last number of years it seems like that there are less and less songs about going to heaven right. less and less sermons that are preached about going to heaven right. amen Paul said that if in this life only we have hope in Christ we would be of all men most miserable yes. the reason we're here today I trust is because we believe yes. that God has prepared a place for us yes. that where he is, we can be with him. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We look at death from our, our position, from this place. But how does heaven look on the other side or death from the other side? There's some things that look different from the other side. I remember... Some years ago, I had been preaching in New Brunswick, Canada. And it was winter time, and we had driven back to a very small airport in Presque Isle, Maine, to fly back home here to Alabama. And it was a very overcast day. It was gray. It was light snow was falling. Very cold, dreary day. I'd like to paint that word picture in your mind no sun had been seen all of that morning it was about noon and it was still such a day and I remember in that small plane as we took off we began to make our way up as we entered the clouds it was, seemed so heavy so gray and so perhaps impenetrable especially to our vision we were going up through those clouds after a bit, suddenly, we broke through that cloud bank. And there was the sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing between us and the sun, beautiful as it could be. As I looked out the window, it seemed just as white as it could be on the, on the other side of the clouds, on the other side of the dreariness. On the other side, it looked as if you could step out of the plane and walk across that surface of the clouds. What a difference it made in how I looked at it. 
from the side that we were uh, on before we took off and the side that we reached after we went through the clouds and came out to the sunshine. I want to tell you that heaven is like that. I read a, I read a, uh, about a little girl saying uh, to her daddy, she looked up at a starry sky one night and she said, Oh, daddy, if the wrong side of heaven is so beautiful, what must the right side be? Amen. 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 As we look at death from the other side, the psalmist spoke of God's view of death, as I've already quoted to you here today, that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. From this side, for us, death is a time of sorrow, isn't it? Time of feeling loss and separation. But from the other side, for those that have gone on, for them, it's a time of release. Right. It's a time of reunion. And it's a time of rest and reward. Hallelujah. Yes. I want to consider those opposing views. From our perspective today, death seems like the end. From the other side, it is the beginning. Death viewed from this side seems like it's so final. It appears to be the end of so much. The end of life, the end of relationships, the end of all that we have worked to achieve, of all that we've earned, the end of all that we have laid up. But from the other side, death is not the end. It's an entrance. When Jesus rose from the grave, Paul said that he set us free from the bondage of the fear of death yes. and it held men captive all their lives. Because when Jesus ripped the door off of the grave, it became a passage and was no longer a prison. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's how the saints of God see death. Yeah. Right. It's a passage from this life into his yeah. presence. Yeah. It's no longer a prison. It's no longer bondage. Amen. Death is not a goal. It's a gateway. Right. Death is the beginning of a new life. And death ushers in eternal life for every believer in Jesus Christ. Now Paul speaks of death as a departure. He wrote to Timothy. He said, I'm now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. And I found it interesting to note that the word depart here is a nautical term that means to weigh anchor and set sail. Amen. Time of my departure. It's time for me to take up the anchor that anchors me here to this life and set sail and take my journey. Paul can say... I'm now ready because he had kept the faith. Yeah. Right. Right. He wrote on to Timothy. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Right. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So then death is not the end, but it's the beginning of a new life. Amen. The second thing that we often consider about death is that it looks like separation to us. But from heaven's point of view, it's actually a reunion. Yes. In Genesis, Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age. An old man and full of years and was gathered to his people. To be gathered is not to cease to exist. And there are some that teach that doctrine in our world today that when you die, when you take that last breath, it's over with, that's the end, there's nothing more. But when God breathed the breath of life into Adam, the Bible said he became a living soul. And that soul will live somewhere forever. Right. To be gathered is not to cease to exist. 
but it's to continue existing in another sphere. Oh, yes. So Abraham became part of that glad reunion. You know, I feel the presence of the Lord here right now. Amen. I, I don't want to just rush through today in, in form and ceremony. But we're here today to acknowledge and honor the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's why we're here at the passing of our dear sister. Because she embraced him as her Savior. Amen. Amen. You know, if you just lift up a hand and say, thank you, Lord, for your presence here right now. Thank you for coming into this sanctuary. Blessings. In the name of Jesus. Oh, let your spirit be comforted. Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let it be the comfort today that we need. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Again, Paul writes in Thessalonians, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. Yes. Listen. Yes. With the voice of the archangel yes. and with the trump of God, yes. the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. Yes. We've already been singing about that today. Yes. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, Comfort one another with these words. Amen. Amen. As the tears flow and the sadness attempts to prevail, comfort one another with these words. It's not over with. Death is not final. Hallelujah. We're here to celebrate. Hallelujah. It was changed by the intervention of the Spirit of God. The gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. Death is not the end. It is the beginning. It's not parting. It's arrival. It's not separation. It's reunion. Third thing I would like to point out is that from this side, death looks like it's a loss. But from the other side, it's gain. From this side, it appears to be defeat. But from heaven's viewpoint, it's victory. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Paul said this way, said it this way, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Amen. Amen. So the bottom line, as we look sometimes at, at business, we talk about the bottom line. The word gain here that Paul used is a business term. It means to make a profit. And that's what every business attempts to do, I suppose, <laughs> is to make a profit. And so the bottom line is, as they say in business, that death is not losing, but it's gaining. Hallelujah. Amen. If you believe that Jesus died and rose again. Hallelujah. And you have embraced that through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Many years ago, the southern tip of Africa was known as the Cape of Storms. Weather conditions were very treacherous there. It seemed to be a sailor's worst enemy, a graveyard of ships and ships' crews. But in 1688, Bartholomew Diaz rounded the Cape and was believed to be the first man that ever returned from that voyage. And after he was able to do that, after this feat, the Cape of Storm was renamed. It was renamed to the Cape of Good Hope. What seemed to be such a terrifying and fearful yes. place yes. was named the Cape of Good Hope because he had gone there and returned. Before Jesus' resurrection, death was considered to be, by most people, a cape of no hope. Right. Right. 
But Jesus rounded the cake, didn't he? Yes. And it returned. And now we have no fear. Amen. 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 Jesus came and the work that he did of atonement has delivered us from the fear that held us bondage. It's been proven that it can be done. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. So what happens in the morning? Psalm says, sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endures but a moment. His favor in his favor is life, and weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In the morning we will be healthy. In the morning we will be happy. And in the morning we will be home. Some months ago, traveled to preach the funeral service, the homegoing service of Brother William Reeves, who was a member of this church for many years and in later years had lived in Florida and in Tennessee. And as he was spending his last few hours in this life, in this world. He was having a very difficult time breathing. He was struggling. Brother Joel Padgett was with me and we were able to visit with him and it seemed like for about a half hour that God just came in there and and um, gave him strength and, and he was laughing with us and remembering times of past, good times. And we left that evening and sometime <coughs> during the night he would take his last breath. But prior to that taking place, about three o'clock in the morning, he called his son and his wife over and he told his son how much he loved him and he thanked Sister Reeves for taking care of him helping him through this difficult time and he said just wanted to tell you that I love you so much 